Okay, here we go, guys. This is gonna be a very common objection. You guys see it all the time. Let's move quick. This is gonna be pretty simple. How many times you guys ever heard I need to talk to my wife? Man, come on, man. They always saying that. Gotta to talk to my wife. They ain't even married, right? There is a way to handle this. There is a way to handle this that is very smooth. It makes sense. It's not like offensive. Cause I know some of you guys, guys like I talk to my wife, you're like, dude, let's just do it. Oh, yeah, you do this and you ain't gonna do it, okay? Listen, here's the deal. You gotta handle this one with glass eggshells. Dude, it's the person he chose to die with. It's his wife. And by the way, she's important, very. If you handle it just right, there's a way to get around this. There's a way to handle it most of the time. Let me explain the word most to everybody. There's no clothes that works 100% of the time. If someone tells it to you, run from them because they're a fraud and they're a liar. I told you guys to have an arsenal of clothes to have on your, on your heart. So when someone says something, you got multiple ways to go. Everybody in this room has something that they say when someone says, I need to talk to my wife. Let me give you another one. Does that make sense? And by the way, what you say, the question is, does it work? I hear people all the time like, oh man, well, what I say, I'm like, dude, you made 60 grand last year. I mean, come on, bro. Listen, let's talk about what works, okay? This works. I used it all the time. It's a brand new word track that we didn't release for a long time because honestly, it's a little bit longer and you have to learn how to memorize stuff. But that's not hard because you memorize your address. When you move, you memorize that, okay? Because you got to get your mail. Well, guess what? You got to get your paycheck up and memorize this one. Cool. You yawn, you're going to get 30 push ups, all right? I'm going to start with you, okay? Okay? All right, here we go. All right, so listen, this is going to be simple. See this worksheet, guys? This worksheet, it's right here. We're going to go to the pencil. Is that cool? We're going to the pencil. Me and you are sitting down. We're on the pencil. You've given me all the numbers, and I'm like, hey, man, look, it looks great. I really appreciate it. Kind of like I told you before, I've got to talk to my wife. Yeah, listen, Andy, I can totally understand. Money's important to you and your family, as it is to me. Listen, at the end of the day, you like the vehicle. It may save you some time, save your wife the headache from coming down here and spending the next few hours with us and having to repeat this process. Wouldn't it be great if you could seem like the hero at the end of the day, save your family the time, and get the car at the right deal? Would that be fair? That's my boy. That's my boy. That's my boy. That's my boy. All right. All right. We got the worksheet right here, right? I said, hey, thanks so much. But look, remember how we talked a little bit earlier? Same thing I served him with. I'm going to talk to my wife, and then I'll get back with you. I completely understand. Buying a car is a big decision. It's not like buying a pair of pants. You're going to have it for a while. When you left your laneway this morning, you and your wife probably had a discussion about what would look right for you and your family. Uh, let me ask you this. Based on what you told me, this is the perfect fit for you. What if you were to save your wife the trouble of coming down here and going through this whole process again? You'd be the hero, and you get a new car. Why don't we sign the deal and do it today? Good job, good job. Now listen, number one, hey, that's Come good. On no, Come on, that. Canada. Let me tell you why I'm really massively proud of both. Number one, obviously I can tell that they're training, but number two, what they didn't say was this, which is this. This is what everybody goes to first. Hey, why don't we do this? We'll put a tag on it, right? Let's go show it to her. And then what does he say? Well, now nah, she's at work. And you're like, okay, well then why don't we call her? Well, she's busy. And you're like, well, okay. Why don't, you see what I'm saying? Do, do you want a yes or a no? What I do, guys, understanding about odds, odds in sales is choosing your best odds. Does that make sense? If I ask him to take it to go show it to his wife, what's the chance he's going to say yes? It's pretty slim. Okay. Now I know sometimes I know when it's good to take it to somebody's wife. Does that make sense? Like maybe the guy said like, Hey, you know, if we can work this out, like I'm going to need to go show it to her. Right? Like I hear those things. If I don't hear that, I'm not thinking that that's something that they're planning on doing. So the goal is, is that what I heard are some key words. Understand the concept of the deal. Is anybody in here married? Raise your hand if you're married. We have a lot of single people here. That's crazy. All right. I'll tell you about people who are married. Normally when they buy a car, it's a planned event. It's generally a planned event. Let me explain what that means. Husband doesn't drive on the way home. He's going to get food for the family and he pulls off into a car lot and then he gets talked into buying a car. That didn't normally happen. Okay, they have been premeditating about purchasing something coming up. Does that make sense? Okay, when they did, they probably spoke and discussed like Mary 
other people do about what the deal would need to look like in order for them to make a decision to do a deal. That's the truth. Why don't we repeat that? Why don't we really tell people how they're feeling? And then lastly, do you think wives want to come down to a car dealership and hang out? It's the last place they want to be. So the idea of it is we could call the customer who's in front of us a hero and tell them that he actually has the ability to pull all the headache out of the deal. Times have changed, things have changed, and there's a better way to buy a vehicle without having your wife come all the way down here. Maybe last time the different salesperson that you bought your car from didn't give you that option, okay? But I'm not him. Okay, I'm married myself, right? And there is a better way. I'm going to go over it with you. Does that make sense? Now you're actually guiding them to a better way that they weren't thinking about. And plus, when you speak to them, are you making it their idea? Are you making them think, you know what, man? You know, this might be a better way. I like this. Does it sound like it should be done that way when you're describing it to them? Or are you kind of just merrily stating the facts that this is how it goes at a, at a house? Your job is to persuade people. Am I right or right? If you're not persuading anybody to do what you wanted to do, you're not going to sell anything, okay? And if you do, it's only by people who have to buy something, so you're taking out a very small percentage of the market. I want the whole pie. Persuading and influencing are probably the two strongest things in the world. Guys, do you know what an influencer is? An influencer is somebody who influences. That's a person who what? Gets somebody to want to follow them. Am I right? Are you worth following? That's a question. I'm asking you a question. Are you worth following? Then talk like it. Communicate like it. You're not a car salesman. You guys are business people. Start acting like it. That's the problem. Your managers have taught you to be car salesmen. You're not. You're a business person. Your job when you speak to people is to be an influencer. You want to generate your own leads in life and have people come in and ask for you every time they buy a vehicle? Make them remember you for life. Let's go, baby. All right, all right, let's go. Let's go, Jacob. Let's keep moving. Hey, so this one's too super easy. Guys, hey, listen, I totally understand. As busy as life is for most people when it comes to purchasing a vehicle, especially with the family, it's generally a planned event. When you left your driveway this morning, I am almost certain you and your wife had a conversation on what the deal needed to look like in order for you to feel completely comfortable making a decision. You said you loved the vehicle, that you would be extremely happy with the safety and the fuel economy, and we're well within your budget. So let me ask you this. If I can save your wife the trouble of having to come all the way down to the dealership, plus save her the time of having to sit through the entire process, and you could be the hero that takes all of the headache out of the deal, would that upset your wife in any way? In any way, if I can do that for you? Guys, that's it. Come on. That's it. Come on. Come on. Listen. Come on.